Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, welcome. I was about to sort of, uh, it's a second Sunday before Advent. It's Advent Sunday in two weeks' time. Isn't it amazing it's how quickly uh, things have gone this year? We're looking at uh, membership today. That's one of our final ship. So we'll be having a few weeks on uh, exploring what that means. Uh, but just as we begin the service today, some of you may, uh, some of you, I do know that you know, some of you don't know, uh, but sadly, uh, Eric has passed away uh, quite suddenly uh, on uh, Saturday, around about, I think, Saturday, um, just yesterday, I think, uh, can't confirm the time. So, yeah, so Eric's sadly passed away. So, um, just really appreciate, obviously, I know you will already because you, you're, with a lovely family, but continue to pray for, for of course, Tina uh, and for Eric's family uh, at this time as well. So, um, but yeah, just uh, sad news to start the service, unfortunately, as I say, we, uh, just a wonderful man of God and um, yeah, sort of oh, just incredible, incredible man. And we know he, he's in the conscious presence of our, our Lord and Saviour. We know uh, that he's safe for eternity, but, but that's still... Um, doesn't help, does it, when the, the sudden loss is there and, of course, that the family and, and Tina will be going through a, a bereavement journey now of coming to terms with that loss. So, um, yeah, please continue to pray for Tina and, and Eric's family as well. So, I know then after that, we've, I say birthdays and anniversaries because we might be singing a song and it's very difficult when you're leaving, leading to, to sharing some sad news and then of course, having to, to journey on. But do we have any birthdays and anniversaries to, to celebrate at this time? No, I was going to say nobody. Okay. Oh. Oh, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, it's, that's always a good reminder, isn't it, in church? It's, yes, it's, it's my wife's birthday. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, but uh, we'll, we'll sing happy birthday to Jenny anyway, and um, brilliant. Let's, it should, we said, it appear on the, yeah, thank you. Happy birthday to Jenny, and I do hope you have a, a blessed day and some time, good time together. So, um, some opening liturgy, and then um, we'll have a, an opening song. So, um, if it's if it's anything like me, it'd have disappeared on because I'm not good with technology, is it? Is he not there? Oh, here we go. Wonderful. Brilliant. If you respond in the, the white bowl print. So God is spirit. Let us worship him in spirit and truth. The Lord is with us. Let us praise his name. And let us pray, church. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so let's now worship. If you're able to stand, would you please do so? Come thou fount.
Uh, thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord. It speaks about your un. It speaks about the unmerited favour, Lord. We we don't deserve it, Lord. But you do not withhold it. It speaks about your loving kindness. Your kindness, Lord, which we thank you, Lord, which it was your kindness that led us to repentance. It was your kindness, Lord, that reached out. It was your kindness that enabled us, Lord, to hear the good news about your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Thank you for grace, Lord. Thank you that your grace is always with us. You never fail, Lord. I think each of us here are aware of his loving kindness towards us. We don't get what we deserve. Because it was him who paid the price for that. Thank you for the cross. I just want to uh, allow a few minutes to as the Holy Spirit maybe ministers to you or wants to speak through you today. Let's just be mindful of his grace.
Holy Spirit, I pray um, as the Holy Scriptures have spoken, your living word, that our hearts and our minds may be open to hear and receive it and apply it to our lives, we pray, for the glory and honour of your holy name. Amen. Please be seated. Um, we've got a good block of worship after the word, as you, you know, uh, I say our new format of service, we started it in January about 12 months ago, so obviously we, it's, uh, the structure feels a little bit different uh, each week, and, um, but could we have our Bible reading please from Genesis 12, thank you. The reading this morning is from Genesis 12, verses 1 to 9. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to a land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. All peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. And so Abraham went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abraham travelled through the land as far as the site of the great tree, Moriah, at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there, who the Lord had appeared to him. From there he went on towards the hills of Bethel and pitched his tent. With Bethel on the west and Ai on the east, there he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abraham set out and continued towards Negev. This is the word of the Lord. So I'll run with this because uh, I'm sure I'll be doing a little bit of moving about today. But, um, but yeah, we're well, looking at our, um, our seventh ship, which is membership. And you're probably thinking, uh, well, what's our seventh ship about? Well, I'm just going to explore today and maybe next week. Um, I call it the go aspect, the go aspect of the, of the ship. Now... Let's think about, you know, the, the Latin, Latin word missio dei, which I'm sure you've heard of it. It's the mission of God. Uh, could also be interpreted as the sending God. The mission of God, the sending God. And that's what our final ship is about, really. It's not that we have a mission, but it's his mission through us, through his people. And that's so important because sometimes we can think that we're on a mission, but we're not on a mission. We, well, we are on a mission, but we're on his mission. Okay, so it's the mission of God, and it speaks about the sending God. And what we're going to be thinking about today is how God sends Abraham. Um, of course, we know who becomes uh, Abraham in uh, Genesis, I think, 17, 5, and 
uh, where it's through the covenant of circumcision where the word Abraham, be I think, is interpreted as the father uh, of many and he becomes, of course, the father of many nations. So that's just in my head somewhere, but uh, yeah. So that, that's there. And, but I want us to think about the past and you probably think, oh, we're supposed to be thinking about the past. Well, I think, yes, we'll think about the past, the present and the future. And I want three things to think about from uh, Abraham's life. And therefore, I want it then to be applied to our lives. So we're going to be thinking about past, present and future. And looking at us individually and, of course, corporately as the body of Christ. So that's what's in my head and on my heart this morning. And somehow that's going to sort of uh, flow out. Okay? Are you up for that? Brilliant. Let's, let's go for it. So we're going to be thinking about the past. Now, uh, before we... Um, oh, sorry. Bef I, I know what I have forgot. Sorry. I forgot this, and it's so important. I forgot our vision statement. I've got carried away with, uh, with telling you something. And I think the vision statement is important because uh, it's certainly when we're thinking about the, the, uh, the mission of God, the sending God, of course... It's our heart's desire because it's his heart's desire. We'll say this together. We want to see all people know Jesus Christ and their purpose in him. Absolutely. And I think this talk today really fits well, actually, with, with the vision statement. And you'd expect you to do, really, wouldn't you? But, uh, but there we go. Let's look, first of all, at... Um, Acts chapter 7, verses 2. Now, I'm thinking about the past in Abraham's life because if we're not careful, um, we, can get to, um, we can get to Genesis 12 and almost think that all of a sudden God's appeared and, and off he goes. But St. Stephen, the, the, after this we have the, the stoning of Stephen, the first martyr, but this is what Stephen says. He says, to this he replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham, because he was Abraham, became Abraham, while he was still in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran. Yeah? So therefore what we have is there's something about, we, we get to Genesis 12 and we think, right, yeah, so... Um, Depends what, um, if you actually look at the NIV version of Genesis 12, it, it actually does say um, that God had said there's something about a past tense word which appears in there. Why am I getting to this? Because I believe that before um, the calling became uh, and, and Abraham goes, that there's been a work that's been taking place in Abraham's life in the past. It says the God of glory appeared. Now, I want us to think about our lives. Before we received the Lord Jesus Christ as our saviour, there would have been a work taking place within our lives. Now, so that when you hear the good news, you respond to the good news. But I remember, uh, do you want a little bit about my life? And you've heard, you've heard this, as, you've probably heard this story before. You may not, may, may not. and uh, I do like to tell some stories. But, uh, uh, you know, terrible teenager, Darren. And, um, and you, you'd think if I'm standing here today as a church leader, I'm sure if any of my friends ever tuned in and found out it was me, they'd be thinking, I can't believe somebody like him could, could be being called by God. Because w when you look at our lives, I was a terrible teenager. But do you remember the New Testament Psalms we got from school? Does that, I don't know, maybe some did, some didn't. Uh, the Gideons. We, I always used to, I, wasn't, I didn't grow up in church at all. I had nothing at all to do with church, no Sunday school, no nothing, no absolutely nothing uh, of, of the Christian faith. But when I was given the word of God, I used to read the word of God in private. 
Why, what's all that about? And then hide it under my pillow. I didn't understand what I was reading, but I was felt drawn to pick it up and read God's word. And I look back and, and I really believe that the Lord had his hand upon my life. Even before I was consciously aware of it or I, even before I began to search for something in my early 20s. And I believe that the Lord, even then, going back then in the past, before I fully received Jesus as my Lord and Saviour, that a work had been taken place. So today, just want to let you know that you are not here by accident. If, if you're saying, oh, I don't know why I'm here, well, I'm t you're here because the Lord wants you here today. He wants you here today. And, and part of the vision statement about knowing the purposes of God, I, I believe that the Lord has a plan and a purpose for all of our lives. Uh, and I just want to know that um, if, you if, you've, if you have received Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, absolutely amazing, wonderful. Uh, if you haven't, then there's a great time to do that today. Absolutely. Um, you know, but... If you're here today and you've been here a number of years, there's been something taking place in your past so that when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, that there's been a preparation taking place in your life. So that's the first thing I want to say. And I don't want to dwell on that too much, but I want to know that it happened to Abraham because the God of glory appeared to him. And then what takes place? Okay. Now the Lord says to Abraham, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I'm going to pick up a little bit on the land I will show you a little bit later because I'm going to show you the Hebrews uh, reading for that. But I want us to think about just some things at the moment. Um, so now the Lord says, so we have the word of God. So God has spoken to Abraham and he tells him to go. And guess what Abraham does? Well, he's willing to go because he's obedient to the word of God. Now, you'll notice as you read through the accounts, it, it takes a while for Abraham to, to be disentangled. And you know this from... I just made one or two notes, which I must refer to. Um, disentangled from his country, his kindred, his father's house. And do you know what, church, when we think of, and I'm thinking about the present now, that when you come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, it takes time for us to be disentangled from the world which we were part of. To, to go, and by the way, I'm going to be not, it's not necessarily a physical journey. I'm going to unpack that a little bit more. Bear with me. I can only get so many words out at, at a time. I'm just, the stuff just churning around in my head at the moment. Um, but it takes time for us to be disentangled from the world in which we live. Because as God calls Abraham, he's now calling him to a new way of life. He's calling him to a walk of obedience. He's calling uh, Abraham to, to walk in obedience, yes, by faith, but God wants him to live according to his word and his ways. And when we think about this membership, this mission of God, this sending God through us, when we come to know Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, guess what? We have to start that process of disentangling ourselves from the world and its ways. We still call to live in the world. We have to live in the world because we have to work in the world. We, we, we have to live in it, but in a sense we're not of it. And that's the difference. And so, I don't know about, you might say, well, I'm still being disentangled, Darren. Because, I don't know about you, we, we form habits, don't we? Habits which are strong. And when we come to faith, Sometimes things are broken immediately and things go, and all of a sudden, you know, we, we get on track. And other times what we do 
is we start the journey, we start to disentangle ourselves, and then all of a sudden we pull back. And then we go again, and then we pull back. And there's a constant battle taking place for our lives because God's calling us to a new way. Does this make sense? Or Thank you, because I've got, to, I've, got, I've got to keep going today because there's really good news in this because it takes time to be disentangled. And guess what? We may be the only Christian in our family. And, and by the way, if all of your family is Christian, amazing. But you know, for some, for some in the Christian life, you may be the only Christian in your family. And you think, well... What's that song? You've heard it sung in this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. I'm not good at singing, so I'd, I'd make a mess of that. If anybody's tuning in online, they think, oh, he's singing again. Let's just switch off until he, he gets back to God's word. But we might be the only Christian. And you know what? When, when Abraham was called, his family, you know, when you look at the history of it, there was so much idolatry taking place because they wasn't worshipping the true and living God. But Abraham says, no, in obedience, I'm going to walk. And, and when we are first called to faith in the present, is we're called to continue to be this light. We're called to, even though we might be the only Christians, we've disentangled ourselves from the world and its ways, and we're saying, no, we've set out on this journey, this journey of faith, this journey of obedience, and he is faithful to us, and it's my heart's desire that, that I may be faithful to him. And you might be the only light in your family. And by the way, it's not that, you know, we love our loved one. I'm, do you get what I'm trying to say? You might be the only one who knows, knows Christ in your family. And, and guess what God's calling you to do? He's saying to you, walk in obedience to me. Keep going. Keep following my word. I've disentangled you from the world and... Although the world keeps on trying to pull you back, now live for me and be a light for me. You see, that's one of the biggest challenges of the, the GO membership of our ship. Because it's not about the next church program. Because by the way, as much as we love church programs, and that, that's all amazing, but when you look at how much time you'll spend at church in a week, and I know some more than others, and this is not about us having a tick sheet and what we do and not do, but the, the amount of hours you'll be out of church fellowship will be a lot compared to what you're in it. And therefore, individually, what we need to do is we need to be shining brightly in the world about us with our neighbours, in our workplace, whatever we are, whatever we're doing, it's going to be, Lord, I'm... I want to shine for you. And I just want to keep on walking obedience, keep on living my life for you, Lord, because just as you sent Abraham, you says, go, Lord, you're telling me to go. And I love a quote, and I think this is such a, such a, uh, it really got to me, this quote, did you know, I, I like to do reading, but McLaren's exposition says this, either our faith will separate us from the world, or the world will separate us from our faith and our God. It's a big challenge, that, ain't it? And um, either our faith will separate us from the world, or the world will separate us from our faith and our God. And I'm just saying to you this morning, just keep going. Keep going. Keep walking. Keep on walking in obedience. Keep on, do you know, that there's a daily battle for your life. Because 
Jesus says, I've come to give you life and life in all its fullness. And the enemy doesn't want to give you life and life in all its fullness. And so there's a daily battle for you and, and, and what we as the body of Christ are, are going to do is saying, Lord, we're going to continue to walk according to your will and your ways. And Lord, you've given us the most amazing instructions and we're going to seek to follow them, Lord. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just press on and um, I've got so much more I want to tell you. I think Christ should have just had their longest sermon. Um, and I've just told them it gets longer as we journey to Advent. <laughs> it, St. Paul tells the church in Corinth, for we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are isn't that interesting? Now, I love the fact that, <laughs> I love it that it says, for we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ. Have you ever thought how pleasing you are to God? Because you have Christ within you, because you're a child of God. I want to just encourage you but also challenge you on this and say um, I believe that the light of Christ can get brighter within us the closer we follow him the more closer we walk with him the light increases within us Lord uh, I long for the aroma of Christ to increase within me not just because we're having a party every Sunday because we're saved and it's, it feels like it's such a, a lovely, joyful atmosphere. But wherever we are, wherever we call to on a day-to-day -day basis, Lord, there'll be those who do not know you. But Lord, I want them to know you. And, and I want to be able to have an opportunity to just share something of you. I want to have an opportunity for someone to say, but you're different. But I can't put my finger on what is different about you. There's something different about you. Has anybody ever says that to you because they don't know you're in Christ? There's something different about you. And, and they're not saying they're not, they're not nice different. They're saying there's something that's good. And then you say, well, that's interesting you say that. It's Jesus the aroma of Christ. And church, when we call to individually and corporately go, uh, whatever we do as the body of Christ, I, I believe that we, in the present, we just need to continue to be living for him. I'm just going to unpack something about, um, I've got, there's more, I'm sure you've heard that. As a, let's have a Hebrews 11.8. It says this, and I didn't quote this from the Genesis 12. It says, By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place, he would later receive his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Do you know what? I don't know about you, when you first came to faith in Jesus Christ, you didn't know what the future held, did you? You didn't know where he was leading you, where you was going. And not all of us go on a physical journey, and I know we do journey through life, but not all of us are says, we're told, right, you've got to go somewhere. I mean, as a family, we, we were called to go, and we started a journey, and we didn't have a clue where it was going to end up. I'd even thought... What, what was that church we looked at in Kowloon? Was it China? China. The, and we've, we ended up in North Staffordshire. It's not much different, you know. <laughs> but we've, we've been around North Staffordshire for nearly 20 years now. But we, we didn't know where we were, we were heading. We just said, yes, Lord, we, we, want to, we just want to serve you. And, and, we, and we go. And, but for each of us, we set out on a journey of discovery. 
And, and I love what one commentator says, and I need to just turn my notes over for this. And, uh, I was reading the, the Tyndale commentary, and uh, there's one of the authors, his name is Kidner, and he said this, or well, this is a summary of this. He says, we swap the known for the unknown. And I, and I found this fascinating because what he was really trying to say is all that we knew without Christ, we now swap it. And everything we enter into, in a sense, is the unknown. But we swap the known for the unknown. And it's not that we all go on this journey and, and leave our homes and leave our uh, communities. For some it is, but for others it's not. But it is about a, a spiritual journey of obedience. So wherever God plants us and we get planted, we say to God, okay, I'm going to journey with you. And I'm not even sure where he's heading in the present because Abraham wasn't sure where he was all heading to. God just says, right, go. And the, the, um, the blessing that it's often taught as the, the sevenfold blessing, isn't it? And uh, I can't teach you all seven. It's, I've not got time today. But there's the final verse of it says, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So we thought about Abraham's past, we thought about our past, we thought about the present, and now we're going to think about the future. You see... When we're all clothed one day with the imperishable, when Jesus draws his people to himself and, and every tribe, tongue and nation stands, I wonder then when Abraham, because we became Abraham in Gen Genesis 17, whether he then looks and says, now I fully saw what you promised. Because this is quoted in the New Testament, this final line of the blessing. If you look in, I, I, I am pressing it, here we go. If you look in Acts chapter 3, in a sense you could say the, you know, the, I've, I've said the, uh, love the God's chosen people. We love God's chosen people. The Jewish people, and of course, is being referred to in Acts chapter 3. You might say it's the physical descendant, and then of course the the Gentiles become the the spiritual, the, the fulfilment of that which is promised. Through your offspring, all peoples on earth will be blessed. Acts chapter three, Galatians chapter three, verses eight, all nations will be blessed through you. You see, the promise came to Abraham and then he set out on a journey and it's an incredible promise because that promise will only be fully realised right, I believe, at the end. And you're probably thinking, well, but how does that connect with me? Let me tell you. And I want you to be really encouraged now. Because as you read Hebrews, you know that People were promised and not all get, got to fully see the fulfilment of the promise. But what they all did was walk in obedience and faith. And that's what I want to encourage you with today. Is never underestimate. Never underestimate what God will do in and through your life if you continue to walk in obedience with him. I want you to continue to sow well. Sow well. And you know, you might be surprised one day 
just as we all might be surprised one day, where it speaks about every tribe, every tongue, every nation, as it's all brought together, as we are all one in Christ, we might just look around and go, oh, goodness gracious me. I never... I prayed for that person. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I witnessed and, and then I didn't see them for... Oh, goodness knows how long. They're in Christ. Families where you, you continue to sow well now and, and potentially unless the Lord returns long after we've gone, they make, make a commitment to Christ. Grandchildren. Just... Never underestimate. And by the way, I'd love for you to see it all now, because if you see all the fruit now, that would be amazing, because don't we all love to see fruit? Of course we do. The fruit of salvation, there's nothing more important. But, but, but even if you don't, don't stop sowing. Don't stop sowing with your neighbours, with your family, with your friends, in your workplace. Wherever you are, just keep on sowing well. That's what I call the full reward. Yes, the full reward of our eternal salvation. And by the way, that's enough. We, we, you know, there's nothing more important than the gift of salvation, but... Oh, I just don't want the gift to stay with me. I want for others too to receive it. So I'm going to finish up by saying, Abraham had a past, so did you. He was called in the present, so you were, were you when you were called to receive your Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And he carried on journeying and that promise I believe will be fully fully fulfilled one day and when I think about your future and my future never underestimate what God will do in and through your life and my life as we walk in obedience to him in Jesus name today I speak amen I think we're going to be looking at the Great Commission a bit next week before we uh, enter into a month of mission, really, which is what December's about. It's, uh, it's a month of making sure we continue to look outwardly to and invite people to come and hear the good news. Let's, as the Suzanne and Howe is getting ready, let's just uh, prepare ourselves. We're going to have a good block of worship now. Thank you for your grace, Lord, towards us. Thank you that you never give up. You're faithful. Help us to walk, we pray, faithfully, Lord, to you. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and move in this place, we pray. If you're able to stand, would you please do so? Christ is my firm foundation. The
you Lord that we can put our hope and our faith in you Lord we don't need anybody else you will never fail you're the hope of the world Lord
Just gonna just continue because I, I just Lord would remind me of two things. Just at the end of um, the song, the first thing was maybe you you set out on the journey, but the journey was interrupted along the way through life, through through various things and. Um, And there's times when you just think about this and uh, and you feel so sorry that that's taken place, but it's happened. And I just feel that the Lord's saying to you today to, to place that at the foot of the cross because today is a new beginning. Today is a, an incredible opportunity to now walk in that obedience for the rest of your life, that decision you can make today. And there's a second thing that's come to mind as I was just worshiping at the end, and it was, there's people carrying things here which at times, um, they're just weighing you down and, um, and only you know what they are. And I just feel that the Lord's saying, just place them at the foot of the cross today. You don't need to carry this anymore. You don't need to carry it, you can place it down and you are free and you need to be free indeed. If those two words speak to you today then the Lord wants you to place them down. And today is a new beginning. Holy Spirit, come and just continue to minister to us, we pray.
going to continue just to remain in the presence of God as just Joan wants to share a word. I just wanted to give a testimony. 25 years ago, Gary and I went to Rwanda. We were invited to go, not knowing what would happen and what the purposes of God were. But there, we met a wonderful young guy named Moses and his wife, Jemima. She just had a baby, Karen. And he gave up his week to come and take us around in a truck, traveling all around, doing the events and the preaching with the guy, Don Egan. That was the past, not knowing why we went and what we did was important. We came home, and then my son, who was in a mess, I sent him, go visit Moses. And he stayed with Moses in a kind of a shack with a corrugated metal and a hose pipe for a shower. But he came back saved, wonderfully saved and changed forever. But then now, and Moses came to visit us often. We blessed him. And his faith was to have his own house. And people laughed at him. I sent him little money. I remember sending him a little money to buy two bags of cement to help him build his house. And then this year, my granddaughter, who wasn't even born, is going in January as a volunteer to care for babies. She's going to stay in Moses' house. He has a shower and a room for her to stay. That's the present. That's the blessings of God when he says, go. The Moses and Jemima are coming over to visit this year, coming to stay in my house, because I will be in John's house. They have a house to stay and to be blessed. And I pray I'll bring them to visit you, and we'll all be blessed. I just want to share that, so you'll be encouraged when Darren has spoken, when God says go. The answer is yes, and the obedience is the blessings of God. Amen. 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 Just remain in the presence of God, but if you need to be seated, that's absolutely fine. Just standing, seated, lying down, whatever you choose, just enjoy being in God's presence. What's been... Uh, it's okay. What's been put on my heart this morning during this, this very spirit-filled time? I have a message... I have a message for those who are struggling, for people who are fighting battles regarding their faith in Christ, which is something I'm no stranger to. Well, it, you look at your life and, well, where's my life at? And you look at your state of mind and you think, Where's my mind at? And you may look at the people around you. Maybe they have been disagreeable. Maybe the people you love are suffering. Where's the world at? But I want to give you a sound piece of advice. 
Spend some quiet time with this simple little question and ask yourself, where is my heart at? Over everything else and all things. And that's how you find Jesus through any storm. Thank you. God bless. It seems as if it's a, a morning of testimony and uh, encouragement to go. And I, I just want to share what happened to me. And it's a vision that God can give you of a way forward. It may not happen immediately. It may be in a few years' time. But for me, it was a few years' time, and it was a time that I was studying music in um, Burslem College, and it was hard. And um, I said, Lord, why am I here? Why am I doing this? And um, I was coming home one, one day, and I had this vision of leading worship in a prison. And uh, I didn't know how it was going to come about at all because I had no connections and I wasn't doing a lot of leading worship. I was in the early days of studying and um, I just kept going with God for eight years in college. And um, when I came out, uh, I said, Lord, what, what do I do now? Start a choir. So we got a choir together and Pat and Annette at the back, the were in the choir and we visited homes and then there was an opportunity to go into Drake Hall Prison to take the choir in and eventually through just going in bit by bit we were allowed to do the service and I was allowed to lead worship. That was my vision coming to fruition. And there was a lot of ladies ministered to during that time. It went on for quite a while. Uh, my word is to encourage you this morning, if God gives you something, don't let go. Just go with it. Because there's a song that goes, it's called Beyond the Open Door. I don't know if some of us know it. There's a new and fresh anointing. Hear the Spirit calling you to go. Walk on through the door. The Lord will go before you into a greater power you've never known before. He will anoint you for service if you go step by step with him. Thank you.